Tyler, the creator. Mm-hmm. There was a song that leaked out where I, he says something to the point of, I've been kissing white boys since 2004. Okay. It came out there and no one even seemed to care. This whole like gay shock thing, I think, has essentially gone away. Someone comes out being gay, nobody even cares anymore. Right. Now, I don't know if he's really gay or not, but, you know, saying something like that, you're obviously... You're trying to get some sort of response from that. Some sort of arousal. Right. You know, Frank Ocean came out. People continue to fuck with him. Uh, I Love McConan came out. No one seemed to care. Well, this shit is whack anyway. Nobody cared when he was a heterosexual, so. I actually like some of his shit. Ah, he had that up in a Tuesday. That was the only shit. Uh, I don't like his voice. None of that shit. I don't like the way he looked. There was a few songs that I liked. I'll have to admit, there was a few Makona songs I heard that I'm like, oh, this ain't bad. Listen, it wasn't one of my favorite rappers. You at all, liked but... a lot of shit that shouldn't be liked, so we understand, <laughs> Vlad. We get it, okay? We get it. It's it's one of those things where the gay agenda has now fully realized itself in society, where you know. It's not even, well, it's an interesting type of thing. Like, for example, you ever heard of a website called Gawker? Mm Mm-hmm. At one point, Gawker outed Peter Thiel as being gay. Peter Thiel is one of the richest people in the country. He was one of the founders of uh, PayPal. Okay. And And he went on to invest in a whole bunch of other stuff. Multi-billionaire. Gawker outed him as being gay. He didn't do anything about it. Years later, when Hulk Hogan sued Gawker for posting his sex tape, Peter Thiel covered millions of dollars of his legal fees, which ended up bankrupting Gawker. Mm. There was a documentary about it on Netflix. And the editor-in-chief of Gawker basically said that, he said, he doesn't feel there's anything wrong with talking about Peter Thiel's sexuality because, in fact, he's gay himself. And he doesn't feel like there's any, you know, this is something that requires any sort of revenge or shame or anything of that sort. But essentially, this, this gay billionaire ended up completely destroying one of the big media outlets in America over that. Okay. And your point is? Well, you know, people always talk about how the gay mafia exists. Here's here's an interesting example of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. And how they'll fund something and you know what I mean? Quietly, yeah. you know. And once the reports came out that Peter Thiel was funding this lawsuit, he actually didn't even deny it because it's perfectly legal. Right. I mean, the original thing is when you brought this whole Tyler, the creator thing up is basically you're trying to say, look how desensitized society has become to just people being gay or People find, you know, talking gay shit or coming out as gay, whatever the case may be. That's the real gist of this. And, you know, that in itself is disturbing. You know what I mean? Because we're desensitized to a lot of shit that is no good. You know what I mean? We're desensitized to murder in this country. Think about the first time you saw Halloween and all of the type of shit. By the third one, it's like, yeah, whatever. He just got cut in the throat. You know, now it's like horror films ain't even shit no more. You see, it's the same. But then that allows real murder to, you know, you're desensitized about that. Like, you know, like 
So now they've got us to the point of desensitization of homosexual acts. What's the next desensitizing thing they're going to do? Bestiality? Because I just saw on Facebook the other day, somebody sent me some shit. And it was an interview of a lady, looked like she was talking with her mother, and they're talking about fucking a dog. Then she's talking about she met some guy online or whatever. She didn't think nobody was going to be able to fuck with her. But this guy, he's what's called a zoophile. And they're, I'm, and they're talking this shit so matter-of-factly that it's not even fucking funny, right? So so she's like, yeah. So, you know, I had brought him over for on the first date. And so I brought him down to my barn. You know, I want him to see some of my animals. And I introduced him to my my mini horse. <laughs> he said, I introduced him to my mini horse. And when I got there, she said the motherfucking horse, his dick was dropped down. And she said it was masturbating. Now, in her sick mind, when a, when a, when a horse's dick is dropped and it's slapping a... And they're slapping its dick against its stomach. They're calling that masturbation. You might find this video right now. So now, she says she couldn't help herself. And she starts blowing the mini horse. <laughs> right in front of dude. Then she said the motherfucker, the horse, started acting like he wanted to fuck. And she fucked the horse right in front of dude. And he wasn't turned off. He said he was turned on. He wanted the horse's sloppy seconds. And now they're married. And the horse now fucks the man too. I can't make this shit up, Vlad. I can't make this fucking shit up. I swear I can't. Okay? Well, you know, there was a... I mean, I don't know. They're saying the rumor is not true, but there's a rumor about Catherine the Great, you know, one of the rulers, rulers of Russia in the 1700s. And they say, they say that uh, she died while trying to fuck a horse and the horse fell on her. Yo, it's probably true. These motherfuckers are sick, yo. Well, in Brazil, and I think I've talked about this before. Yeah, donkey fucking and all that type of shit, right? All that is legal. You could record that and sell it. Like, I remember walking by a porn store, you know, one of those little erotic shops, and looking over, and it's like, oh, shit, they got that right there in the window. Like, I wish I hadn't seen that, but fuck. Right, and I bet you they're desensitized to that in Brazil. Does that make it good? Because you're desensitized to it? No. That just means somebody overloaded you with, you know what I mean? This fucking information to the point where you're just like, all right, it doesn't even, I have no emotional attachment to it anymore because it's so, there's just so much of it. You know what I mean? But that doesn't mean it's a good thing. Like, but, 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 but these people who are talking all this gay shit, they'll act like people not being, you know, pe people being desensitized to it means that we're actually evolving as a culture. And see, it's not as shocking anymore now when you, when you come out and say that you're gay. It's because people accept it. No, it's not because they accept it. It's because you fucking desensitized us to the point where we don't even give a fuck anymore. It is what it is. We're apathetic about it more than, you know, more than anything. Even if we well, do there's care. also the, the fear of the backlash if you do say something against it. Right. Just like the fear of, you know, if you see a motherfucker get murdered in front of you and you're the witness, you know what I mean? You might be scared to tell the police because the motherfuckers might kill you for telling. You know what I mean?